Welcome back, Biz to Be students. We're going to the ocean. So we're here now at the Bodega Bay Harbor, and here we have these floating docks. That's what I'm standing on right now. And what that means is the dock goes up and down with the tide. So as the tide comes in, the dock rises with the tide, and as the dock goes down, the, the or as the tide goes down, the dock lowers with the tide. And so what we've done on these docks is we've attached plates and some plates have been out for different time periods, some for three months, some for six months, and some for nine months. And so the idea here is thinking about are there changes in terms of the numbers of species from a three month to the six month or a six month to a nine month period, um, changes in terms of diversity, changes in the types of species that we see. Basically do we see these changes in species composition over a nine month time period. And that's what we're going to explore in the lab. We're going to grab some plates, collect some data on those plates, and actually see can we quantify differences over time. Okay, let's take a look at the three month plates. So remember these things have only been out for three months, and so we're not expecting a lot to be on here. If we take a look, some plates hardly have anything, other plates have a few more, a little bit more growth here. Uh, again, this is basically what we expect. They haven't been out very long, things are just starting to get established just starting to grow. Oh, what's that? Are those eggs? <laughs> well, I have some eggs actually attached to this particular plate. We do see a little bit of overgrowth. Some little bit of overgrowth is happening here, but again, we don't expect that too much on the three-month-old plates. Let's take a look at the six-month plates now. So we look at these, a little bit different than we saw on the three-month plates. Looks like we have some sponge growing on here, a little bit more overgrowth happening. If you go down here, you're starting to see a little bit different bryozoan growing on the plate, a little bit more overgrowth. Um, but again, this is what we expect to see in the spring quarter. And if you think about when these plates were put out, they were put out over the winter. So not a whole lot of growth is happening. But there are definitely more stuff on these plates than we saw on the three-month plates. Okay, now let's take a look at the nine month plate. And remember, these have been out since August. Let's look at these, there's a lot more stuff on here. So we have a lot more overgrowth. So there's a lot more of this, this tunica trying to grow over this bryozoan and vice versa. We have a thing called a sea squirt we haven't seen before. These are fun to squeeze. That's why they're called sea squirts. Oh, I just like doing that. Um, but then we have also different species on here. If you look down below, we've got some different species of tunicates. So these things are definitely different from what we saw on the six month plate and the six month plates were definitely different than what we saw on the nine month plates. And they're heavier, aren't they, Rachel? A little bit. <laughs> okay. Normally, we'd take the plates, pack them in coolers and drive them back to Davis. They would be transferred to our indoor seawater systems and students would sample the live animals. Pat will now walk you through the sampling process. Okay, so now I wanna demonstrate how the data are gonna be collected. And just like lab one, you're gonna count numbers of species. We're gonna do a percent cover than count, rather than count number of individuals, and you can use that to calculate a diversity index. To do that, again, like I mentioned, we're gonna use percent cover. You're gonna place a grid like this directly over the plate, and each one of these squares represents 4% of the plate. So that's 4%, that's 4 that's 4%, and so on. So the idea here would be, so say if I wanted to estimate the percent cover, this particular animal here, this tuna kit, I'd say, okay, that's 4%, that's completely covered there. This square here, I don't know, that's about half of that, so maybe that's 2%, so that's four plus two. Then maybe there's 1% here, four here, I'm including those, and so on, as you do your estimates. What you wanna do when you're making the estimates is make sure you're counting for stuff that's attached to the plate then also stuff that's attached to other organisms. And so here, if we look at this little marine worm right here, this particular orange uh, bryozoan is growing on this marine worm. So we'd want to count that. And that'd be your first measurement. 
and that will get us to the PI that you need for the diversity index calculation. So another calculation you're going to be doing is percent cover, but what's only physically attached to the panel itself. So what's only physically touching this panel. And if you notice on this plate here, there is some overgrowth. So this particular bryozoan is growing on top of this animal right here. This, this bryozoan is overlapping this bryozoan. This tunicate is overlapping this tunicate and so on. And so the second measurement we want to take, which we call B in the data sheet, is percent cover on the panel surface only. And so you do the same procedure. You lay the grid on top of the plate here. But now you're only going to count what's physically touching the panel, not what's touching other organisms. So again, I wouldn't count if I look at this marine worm in the corner here. I wouldn't count part of the animal that's actually on top of the worm, but only what's actually surrounding the worm, what's actually physically attached to the panel. And the reason we're doing that is we're interested in uh, percent overgrowth. Let me remove this. And percent overgrowth is our estimate of competition, competition for space. And again, you look at this panel here, space is a finite resource. So there's not an infinite amount of space here. So there's competition for space for these particular animals. And if you recall in the, success, in the succession model, one of the, one of the reasons why we think species types change over time is competition. Some species start to outcompete other species. So again, we see overgrowth here. There's a little bit of overgrowth of this particular tunicate on top of this tunicate here. This different type of tunicate is covering this particular animal here called a bryozoan. And so we're trying to quantify that in terms of understanding is competition for space increasing over time? So you're going to attempt to make those measurements and look at that pattern. Is there a change in competition for space over time? Again, what we're calling percent overgrowth. Now that you know how to measure, let's look at some of the organisms that you will be measuring. We've provided a photographic guide to most of the animals that you may encounter. The guide contains scientific names, but we do not require that you know or use them. Many of these animals are colonial, meaning they exist as a bunch of individuals in a mass. To better illustrate this, let's look at the colonial tunicates. Now, tunicates are modular organisms, so they spread out as they grow. You can see that there are a lot of little holes here. Each of these is an individual. One of the reasons we do percent cover is because it's difficult to count all of the individuals. In some tunicates, it can be hard to tease apart the individuals, so you can see this one here. It's not very clear exactly what an individual is, but this is still a colony of tunicates. Some of the tunicates are not colonial. So, for example, these are solitary tunicates, and you will find them on older plates. You can also see in this example that there is evidence of overgrowth. So you see this is growing on top of this, and over here this is growing on top of this. Another type of organism you may find are bryozoans. They're very variable in their form, but they are also a colonial type of organism. In lab, one way to tell them apart from tunicates is that tunicates are very soft when you touch them, and bryozoans are more crusty. That's due to the bryozoans having calcium inside their structure. And the last of the common animals you may find are marine worms. So these live in tubes which can be made of calcium or mud. You may or may not see the feeding or respiratory structures in the plates that we have provided, but you can see they can have this plume-like appearance or these stringy tentacles. This one is called a spaghetti worm since the tentacles have a spaghetti-like appearance. And these spirorbid worms are really, really small. So it's, unless they appear quite small on the plates, then you're probably looking at a different organism. They appear like tiny little snail shells if you find them. And that's all the animals! Have fun identifying them, and if you have trouble with the lab, please contact your TA. Thank you for watching!